Hi, it's Ronick from Ask Audio. We're at Super Booth 2017, and we're at the NI, well, the Reactor from NI booth. And I'm here with Dave. How you doing, man? I'm all right. Yeah, I'm waking up. It's all quite a noisy alarm call. <laughs> so we're here with uh, some impressive uh, modular pieces, and we're going to be looking at these new Reactor blocks that Native are, are releasing. Um, so these these blocks are basically kind of augmenting uh, the modular experience. Is that right to say? I mean, the ones we're showing this year, they're about, I mean, what we can do as a software modular that is not so easy to do with a hardware modular. I mean, primarily sort of how the interface looks and works and that kind of how you interact with it on a, in a computer sense. Like, it's but still sounding really good. I mean, that's the main intention of it. Cool. It's all about sounding good. So, yeah. okay, so I can see them on the screen here. So, um, so what are the new blocks? Uh, well, I mean, I've got one of the new ones running here at the moment, which is this uh, shift sequencer. The idea with this is that, um, unlike a traditional 16-step sequencer, you can you can take the attributes of a note, so like the pitch, the octave, the velocity, all these kind of things, and actually make those sequences run completely independently. So rather than just having a static 16-step sequence that repeats, you can have all of them running at different tempo, at different speeds, in different directions, uh, over different amounts. So um, it's like polyrhythmic. Sort of, yeah, but it means you get a constantly evolving variation uh, of your sequence. It's a lot of fun. Oh, wow. That's I mean, that's the cool. only one I've got running here, but uh, there's some others as well. I can show you if you want. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so what's going on here then in terms of, like, what are you actually triggering with it? Um, it's controlling. I've got uh, some stuff in my Eurorack rack here. Okay. So what, what it's doing is it's sending, uh, we've got this block which does your calibration. So it calibrates the output of your sound card or your thing to... Uh, you know, so you can use a Walter or Octave oscillator or whatever. So I'm using it to control the um, IntelliJ thing here. Uh, I've also got some triggers coming from there, which are giving me some drum sounds. I've got some drum sounds inside Reactor and kind of mixing it all together. So it's, it's a bit of a sort of hodgepodge of stuff, to be honest. <laughs> no, that's very cool. So in a way, is this, um, is this uh, the Reactor way of uh, integrating hardware and software, or, or software and modular, I should say? Yeah, sure. I mean... Yeah, the block stuff, we, we've, it, it's, to us, it feels like a modular system. And I think we try to keep it as close to being like an analog modular system as we can. Um, so it, everything can be connected within itself in just the same, with the same freedom that you have with our hardware modular. And there's that, you know, if you have, as long as you have the suitable interface for it, there's absolutely nothing stopping you from connecting it as freely with the hardware stuff. So we wanted to make sure that you have the tools that you might need to do that. So ways to calibrate things or maybe condition some triggers. but. You can take an LFO from Reactor and patch it straight onto your modular and it just works like an LFO inside your modular. It really, like, the, the blur, the, you know, the distinction becomes yeah, kind of blurred. Blurred. Yeah. That's very, very cool. Okay, so when is Shift Sequencer going to be available? Shift Sequencer, I mean, there's another four new modules that we've got in this line. I think we're, we're shooting for uh, early next month. Okay. I might be completely wrong, but I think I think that's what we're going for. I'm holding you on that. Okay, yeah, no, I mean, I'm completely responsible if I'm wrong for that one. <laughs> Okay, and uh, can you tell us about the other four uh, blocks? Yeah, shoot, do you want to see them quickly? I can show you. All right, um, let me stop this. Uh, right, so, uh, let me see. Okay, so, this is like um, it's like this new oscillator we're making. Well, we've made, it's been made already. Okay. It's, um, it's like a dual oscillator, but uh, with a difference. Like, it can get, you can do the sort of classic dual oscillator FM type stuff, but it can get super, uh, it's pretty aggressive as well, uh, which is kind of fun. I mean, I really like it for that kind of stuff. So, uh, is it going to give me an outro? Oh, oh hang on. I need, I need to get to my keyboard and I'll turn it up a little bit as well. So, that's like your sort of clean sound, and then you can integrate ads like uh, phase modulation. Wow, that's really loud, sorry. Uh, I mean, it's quite aggressive, basically. Yeah, I am, yeah. and I had my computer ready too loud then. <laughs> cool. Okay, so that's one of the other ones. Yeah, sure. I mean, we've got um, there's this really cool new filter, which we use. Um, it's. I mean, this is one of this, this is a really good example of what I was saying about trying to make a, a, a interfaces that you just couldn't do with modulus, basically. Um, it's 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 a triple bandpass filter, so you can kind of make. You can do your sort of core resonator type stuff, or you can do formant type stuff. 
Um, the idea is that you have some general filter controls here, like resonance and filter types. Uh, but then you can here is where you have all your different sort of filter presets that you can morph between using like the mouse or with Sweet. modulation around here. And then we've made you a bunch of sort of formant filter presets that you can just drag onto it, or you can double click on the slot and kind of make your own. Uh, you can add more slots if you want to, whatever. I mean, you can go really all out with it. I mean, this is like, uh, so I can do some basic sort of vowel type sounds with it, like, all that kind of stuff, which is, I mean, it's a lot of fun. It's got FM on it, so you can do like frequency modulation. Uh, there's another patch you can, uh, I'll show you with it. Um, Where's it going? Uh, yeah, so the other thing I was saying, because you've got three band bars filters, you can, you can actually patch into each of them individually, take the outputs individually, so you can treat them kind of separately, but they still work together, if that makes sense. Um, so, I mean, this example, I'm taking a clock divider and just creating a little sequence of pings, and then picking those filters and using the resonance to make kind of melodic stuff. So you get this... Um, look at that note. So you get this kind of picking stuff, and then... As well as the format process, we also have put some uh, chords in there, so you can sort of, there's like a minor or a suspended, but whatever, uh, and then you can put some, uh, yeah, put some frequency modulation to it as well. And give it like some, and it starts to go. Stuff basically, it's a lot of fun to play with. That is very, very, very cool. Um, uh, are, are there more? <laughs> there I've, are, I've lost count. There are more. That was, I think we're up to three maybe. Yeah, uh, so. We've got, uh, so we've actually got two sort of oscillators. Um, we wanted to make a noise source, uh, and uh, we were like, okay, we're going to make a noise. And then I think myself and the other developers, we made a folder with about 20 different types of noise source in it. Um, and then we kind of amalgamated a bunch of ideas into one of them. Uh, we've got a whole load of others that we maybe will do at some point, but this is the one we kind of run with this time. Uh, the idea is, um, I mean, it's it's a bit weird, and like some of the marketing people keep asking me to explain to them again. Uh, it's a sine wave that's being switched between two frequencies. So, oh, hold on a note. Whoa, really loud again. So you hear it's just, basically I have two frequencies, 100 hertz and 1000 hertz, and it's just modulated between those. Uh, I can change those, and it's, you just get this, yeah. Uh, but then you start to change the speed of it, and you get this kind of FM stuff. But then you can make that, that speed, you can make it unstable as well. So then you start to get this, and, this, and then it breaks into like really aggressive kind of noise sound. Any kind of color of noise, really. It's not white noise, pink noise, whatever. You can get all sorts of weird stuff out of it. Um, and that's flip gen. Yeah, there's a few other options. Like you can you can weight the options. So rather than it just going a, a b a b, you can weight it so it's going to be more a or more b, and then you can change the amplitudes of it. So and you get these really cool kind of crackling noises out of it. Um, like this sort of, it's really gnarly. So. I mean, the sound designers have done some wicked uh, like examples with it. There's one that sounds like sort of vinyl crackle and like weird, all sorts of stuff. I mean, there's one that sounds like you know that sort of just breaking air when a rocket takes off. That comes kind of like all sorts of weird I stuff. I love stuff like that. That's yeah. so cool. So I think, yeah. I mean, it's great for making drum sounds as well. But for sound designers, it's a really good kind of tool for that kind of Excellent stuff. Excellent tool. Uh, there's one more. Uh, okay. I think <laughs> that's I think one more, uh, which is. Um, uh, okay, so I mean, I already showed you the SIF sequencer, but I've got a patch with both of them running, which is um, this curve sequencer, which I guess if you're familiar with Massive, you kind of know the idea. It's yeah. Yeah, it's a sequencer that you can load curves into. Cool. <laughs> and uh, I mean, you've got, some, you've got like a whole library of cur curves that you can drag into it, and you can set the different sort of lengths and all this kind of stuff. And basically, it just provides you with a, a, a sort of interesting modulation source that you can patch anywhere within blocks. So I think I've got it controlling this filter at the moment, uh, if I run that. Uh, so that's just giving me some nice filter modulation. I can I can cross between like a stepped one or 
this sort of choppy one. Um, I mean, it's, as I said, if you're familiar with Massive, you know the idea, but I mean, when we started Blocks, like one of the things I really wanted from the start was to have this one, because it's so much fun, so I'm, yeah. really, I'm really glad we finally got it, and with an interface, it's actually kind of usable as well. Like, cool. Awesome, thank you so much, man, for, no for showing us, that's, um, that's really inspiring as well, it's a really, really cool Blocks. Thank cool, thanks a lot, man. thanks.